Hello, I'm Ben Thompson. Now, we're going to continue our series of the School for the U.S. Constitution, which series is dedicated to helping you come to a better understanding of the U.S. Constitution and the philosophy surrounding it. It is hoped that through this series, we can create an enlightened and informed uh, citizenry that will be more able to distinguish between good and bad government policies and that this will help us to overcome the political crisis that our nation is facing today. Now today we are going to talk about something that I'm sure that we all understand already but that is that government is force. Now this force has been called Leviathan and what is the Leviathan? It is a mythical sea creature that is supposed to be very strong and powerful, but it represents the force that government needs to exist. And government cannot exist without force. The government under uh, needs to have enough power to do what it has to do. And the Founding Fathers understood this. Now, the purpose of the U.S. Constitution is to limit government force. It is not a system of laws for the citizens, it is a system of laws for the government and how it can use its force. Now, there are two com opposite uh, philosophies on the political spectrum. And I'm going to draw it out right here really quick. We got, on the left side, we have totalitarianism and on the right side we have anarchy so this is the real political spectrum people would have you believe a, a different one, but if they give you any other one different from this, it's not the right one. This is the right one. Now, what the founders did was created a perfect balance between these two forces. Totalitarianism is a hundred percent governmental force. That's where the government controls every aspect of your life which at this time is not possible but the idea behind it is to get as close to that system as much as they can now on the right side we have anarchy which has zero government force and we know that's impossible too that never works out so what, what the founders did was created a system that had enough force to do what it had to do and it created a system where people have more freedom and we call that a constitutional republic is right in the center. Now, the, 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 the people today who are educators and in positions of government would want you to believe that we are a democracy. Democracy comes from the Greek word demos and archi, which means people's rule. But the, the people who actually understand democracy know that it is actually what we call a negative term. In, in government, we have positive and negative terms. A negative term is one that creates a system 
where people can be oppressed in one way or another. Democracy means literally that, fit, that the majority of people have all the say. And that's not what we are supposed to be. A, a constitutional republic is designed to protect the minority and their rights from the majority because the majority usually will seek to control the, the smaller portion and this has always gone bad now where would democracy fit in in, a, in the political spectrum it actually leans towards totalitarianism the reason behind that is because the people are the government and the majority has all the say control the um, other the smaller majorities and the majority has no right Now, in understanding more about our constitutional system, we have to understand that our, our founders designed this uh, balance on what you could say a pyramid. Now, we got the base of the pyramid and it is the individual the individual under this system has the, the most importance and the most power The purpose of the Constitution was to make sure that the individual has three basic rights. Life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Now, they, when they talk about the pursuit of happiness, the original quotation was actually life, liberty, and property. And they, um, and the founders thought of, of property as being the pursuit of happiness. So, under this system, the government cannot take away life without just cause, cannot take away our liberty without just cause, cannot take away our property without just cause. Now, the, the Constitution outlines what those just causes are. Now, uh, our life cannot be taken away unless, say, we murder somebody. And um, the, the founders uh, devised that basically uh, life cannot be taken unless it was murder or treason or some other system during a time of war. And uh, that's outlined in the, the Constitution. Now, our liberty, which is our right to to choose our own path, to, to do whatever we could, is with, it has to be within the bounds of the law. Now if we break a law, we can have our liberty taken away, which is what jail or prison and uh, similar things are for. Now our property cannot be taken away. And this was, was very important for the founders. One of the problems that they faced was that um, the British government would force them to quarter, or which means to house, soldiers, and also took their subsistence to, to care for soldiers. And so that's one thing that is actually specifically mentioned, is the government cannot quarter 
s uh, soldiers without your permission, because it's your property. Now, the government outlines specific instances where it can uh, take things. It's outlined in the Constitution. Uh, there is a, a just form of taxation and stuff like that. And so those are the three rights every individual has under a constitutional republic. Now the next step is the family. Now, every family was expected to take care of its own uh, needs and to uh, to have its own space and to 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 teach their children the rules of the society and they were expected to um, teach their own moral and ethical codes and that no one can interfere with that. And so that's why the family is the next step. It takes individuals and unites them using their own f uh, free choice. Now, after a family, you have a group of families, which we call the community or neighborhoods. And these are basically our cities. Now, the city is the basic unit of government. It is supposed to be where all our local situations are taken care of. The founders intended it so that the, the most laws would be made locally. And that would be such as, how do you take care of your streets, how do you uh, divide land, how do you ru uh, run all the basic things that a city needs to run. And that's supposed to be done locally. There's supposed to be no state or federal involvement within that uh, area that, in that, in that involved things locally. This prevented a lot of unjust laws were being created because the people who were closest to their officials in the city government would be more likely to listen to the people because they're so close. Now after our cities comes our, our counties. Now, just like a city, a county is a group of, of cities. Now, the, the, the term county originates from our English law, and a county was a noble figure, but we've, we've rejected the nobility behind it, and kept, but kept the term. And so, these counties are supposed to uh, make laws that deal with uh, situations that are between cities in this region. And by having this locally, uh, cities were less likely to create oppressive laws that the people didn't want. And so, by, by having a, this next step, it was hoped that sit, uh, people locally with between cities can take matters into their own hands. Now, the next step is the state. And states were more united 
than counties. States are made up of different counties. And states were supposed to be um, just like with the cities and with the counties, states deal with matters between counties and are a basic, like a mini country basically. Uh, everything was supposed to be done within the state as much as possible. Uh, laws and and uh, how things are organized were to be determined by the states. One of the big things that the Constitution uh, makes uh, an argument between is the state and the federal government. And so the states have certain powers and the federal government has certain powers. Now finally, at the top of this pyramid is the federal government. The federal government is supposed to um, deal with, like, with everything else, deal with laws that affect us as a nation. They have some extra powers, such as uh, issuance of money, establishing standards, uh, raising a um, national army, and basically all the the things that go with on that level. Now, the founders designed it so that this perfect, well, not perfect, but almost perfect, it was a, a system design to try to prevent as much oppression as possible. And so here we have our political system with the Constitutional Republic in the center balancing the two philosophies of the political spectrum. Next time we are going to begin our, our talks on each part of the Constitution. Now we're going to talk more about the idea of force. As we said, Government needs force, a leviathan, to protect itself and to issue its uh, decrees. Now, the founders designed it so that this force was spread out throughout all the levels of government, from the federal to the individual. And each thing has a balance. The what one one of the things they were worried about was having a too large national army, and the reason behind that is that the federal government could use that to oppress the people. So we have the 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 national army on one side, and then on the other side we have the state militia. Now what has happened today is that basically our state militias have been absorbed into the national army. So now we have a national army and state militia enforcing the will of the federal government. Now, there's actually a third defense against this. And it is, we got the national uh, military, the state militia, and the local citizenry. And it was hoped that these three forces would um, be able to balance each other out. The, the national military is, of course, under the federal government. The state militia is, of course, under the state. The, the local militia was to be made up of citizens, individuals, f from the city. Now, the another example of this is 
we have the inter interstate commerce. Now, because it's between the state, then the federal government uh, comes in and makes low, low laws on how interstate commerce should work. And uh, one of this was to force the states to not do tariffs, which of course is a good thing because it creates a lot of problems. This is this uh, tariff, this uh, lack of tariffs makes it so that we can have free trade between the states. And the state says no, can say uh, can't say no. You can't have free trade here. You have to pay our fine. Now, this is to balance out the individual and the state desire to make more money. And the federal government is supposed to balance that out. Now, on the other side, we have well, I had it in my head in a second ago, be able to come back to me. So well, if I think about it later, we'll talk about it. But um. That's the, the basic explanation. Oh yeah, that's right, I remember now. Um, one of the, the problems with the Articles of Confederation, which is what the Founders first tried to create, was that the states had way too much power. They had too much force. The federal government did not have enough force to, to, to uh, enforce its orders, such as it couldn't... Uh, call up this uh, a, a military it couldn't uh, enforce taxation and it uh, it could not create new laws unless there was like a hundred percent agreement which of course is not good because one person would then have too much power to force the other people to so prevent this um, the founders made it so, uh, um, like a, in some cases, two thirds or three fourths majority could continue on with cre creating a system. So, we understand that the federal government has to have force, but that that force needs to be limited. And by dividing in the force between different groups, this uh, created a a system where it would ho it was hoped that we could prevent as much oppression and tyranny as possible. Now, throughout the years, this has been slowly eroded away. Um, who can say? when this uh, started happening. But one of the earlier examples was when the states forced people who wanted to have uh, plural marriages. When the argument here is not whether it's right or wrong to have a plural marriage. The point was that marriage being a something that's rooted out of religion in the first place, the government had no right to interfere with marriage marriages. And this falls under the First Amendment of the Constitution, saying that the government cannot uh, res uh, restrict a person's religious belief. Unless, of course, it denies other people life, liberty, and property. Now, we are facing... Now, we have other people 
were having the same problem that was had early on in our history in the early 1800s and it was that a majority could decide how a people can uh, worship in their religion and now we're having the argument on whether uh, homosexuals could be married or not. Now, it is not the right of the states or the federal government to determine who can marry who. We're not arguing on a moral ground because that is up to the individual. The individual and families have a right to determine what is moral and what is immoral. Now, the community can speak out against it, but the community cannot force uh, families and individuals to, to have moral thinking. Unless, of course, it denies li life, liberty, and property. Um, our, our state governments have been broken up. One of the reasons for the United States Senate was actually to protect the states. And the House of Representatives was to protect the individuals within the states. Now, what happened was that uh, they said, let's make it so that the people vote for senators, when originally it was state governments uh, appointing senators for the purpose of protecting the state. Now we have this imbalance leaning towards um, individual, which is actually pointed towards democracy. That's why they did that, was so that they could tilt this towards so they can have us thinking we're democracy. We're not a democracy, we're a constitutional republic, which is supposed to create a balance between all these different forces in government. Another force is that we have an extremely large national military. Now, there's nothing wrong with us having a military. It is a good thing. We need a military, a strong military, to protect us. But the problem is, is that the founders intended, for the most part, that, that uh, wars would be fought on our own soil. Now, we, we have our military spread overseas everywhere. And this cr is, will create a weakness within our military by having it spread out all over the place. And if something were to happen, uh, those people would be cut off. And we would be weaker here. And so, for this reason, the, the government had the power to, uh, to recall troops within Congress so that the people could... Uh, we called troops when it, was, uh, when it was determined that we were spread out too thin like this. But more and more our executive branch, the president, is beginning to say stuff like our military is under UN control, which is completely unconstitutional. And it's um, Another, another thing they warned us was that if we had a super large military, it would give the executive more power because the executive directs that military and would attract people who would be more interested in martial uh, control. Which then brings us back to the Second Amendment, which is which is the right for the militias to keep and bear arms. Now, legally, what is a militia? Now, they want you to ignore this because they want you to think that they, they can protect you and that us having firearms is going to lead to bad things. Well, of course, there's going to be bad things in all things, but what we need to understand is that there's a reason behind the Second Amendment and it was to help create this balance. And 
there. We got we got all things have to be tried on a balance. Now, like I said before, we got the national military, which is to protect the nation. The state military, which is to protect the state, and we the end of and the the community militia, which will hopefully balance out in case one or uh, the other seeks to enforce tyrannical uh, laws on the people. That way the people could protect their right and to reestablish these principles if it became necessary. Now they are trying to get us to, to, to take away our firearms slowly and surely. This has never been a good idea throughout history, and the founders never would have approved of this tactic. Now, another way to look at it is because we're spread out everywhere, we lack the ability to for the government to protect everybody at once. And so another reason why we need to have to keep our Second Amendment rights to keep and bear arms is because uh, we were supposed to take care of ourselves locally and only get extra help from outside if we needed it. So we need to protect ourselves first. Now this is the legal definition of the militia. It is every um, man between 18 and 65 within the United States. So if you are 18 and 60 through 65, you are considered legally in the United States of, of the militia. And that's what they don't, another thing they don't want you to un, uh, know about is that legally you are the militia. Now, with all these balances and stuff, there's actually another important force that they don't want you to know about and this is the juries now now they now they want you to think that the jury is all about um, determining who's guilty and not guilty but that's not the full case a jury is also given the power to nullify that means that if you think a law is unjust, you can vote on the jury to nullify. It's not about guilt or not guilty always. If, if a government has created a law that you think is unconstitutional, that is unjust, you can also vote to nullify, which means that that person who's accused is, uh, goes free. And that way, you do not have to say they're guilty or not guilty. Now, this of course doesn't. Like, this wasn't intended for like murder or stuff. If you think they are guilty of murder, then you're guilty. If you think they're not guilty of it, then not guilty, and all those other crimes. But let's say a city said you had to wear a white hat. On a certain day, and if you don't, you'll be f you'll uh, be fined. And if you can't pay the fine, you'll be thrown in prison. So they take you and uh, try you, and you say, you know what? That is not a just law. No, the government does not have a right to determine who wears what hat, what day, what color. I'm going to nullify that law. That person that it's, null it's nullified. They don't tell you this in court anymore. They used to, but they don't, because they don't want you to know you have that power. So just remember that our Constitution was about limiting the force of government and to dividing force between three groups of people. Primarily the individual, the state, and the federal government. And so I hope that this has been informational. If you're not subscribed yet, don't forget to subscribe, and feel free to leave your questions and comments 
Also, check out our website if you like more information. And you can find all that information in the links below. Thank you, and have a good day.